subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button you're watching tag tv Hello viewers I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show with the spiraling count of covid positive cases across the region. While a few Indian states have imposed a second lockdown, the federal government is committed to developing more facilities for patients. The situation has become grim in other countries with Pakistan not even doing enough tests per day. With a population over 200 million, the country hasn't done even 2 million tests. Afghanistan health system on other side has crumbled with a sudden spike in the positive cases. India's financial capital Mumbai has once again gone back into coronavirus lockdown until 31st July, a measure taken to control the spread in country's most affected metropolitan. Places of worship, public transport, government offices and most shops will remain shut and people will be confined to their homes earlier the western city of pune which is also an industrial and tech hub began a 10 day shutdown on 13th july while cities as far flung as shillong in north east to shrinagar the main city of union territory of kashmir in the north imposed new curbs on movement to contain the virus pune shahar mein naye sire se lockdown announce hua hai aur uska implementation shuru hua hai jo aapne sahi kaha ki do phases mein pehle phase mein to kisi bhi tarah ki shop मिल्क और मेडिसिन छोड़ के शुरू नहीं रहेगी और दूसरे फेज में पाँच दिन के बाद जो ग्रॉसरी शॉप्स है उसे परमिशन दी जाएगी लेकिन बाकी शॉप्स पूरी तरह से बंद होंगे Lockdowns and restrictions have proven to be effective in reducing the pace of the spread. Authorities also get time to equip themselves against the virus. government in different states of india have been taking measures as per their individual needs and urgencies the central authorities are providing all major external supports indian federal government is already operating world's largest temporary hospital with 10000 beds capacity for covid-19 patients in new delhi Meanwhile amid a shortage of official vehicles in neighboring Bangladesh thousands of private ambulances in Dhaka are playing a critical role in country's fight against coronavirus The official emergency helpline 999 now directly links caller to private ambulances along with traditional police and fire services There are 490 private ambulances specifically tasked to work with the line although dispatchers can call upon the other private providers as well Ei mohamari obostha sara sara Bangladesh corona rogi sara no rogi pacchi na amra ekhon jekhane jacchi sekhane corona rogi ebong amar dead body ne ei ponto theke oi ponto jacchi thal in the south asian country pakistan which claims to have around 260000 cases is being slammed by their own opposition party for testing too little even at the time of crunch unlike the second most populous country and its immediate neighbor india pakistan government hasn't appeared systematic in its fight against the virus with people accusing it of being callous The situation is worsening in Afghanistan as well with an already weak health system crumbling before corona. 
Humanitarian Society Red Crescent said that Afghanistan faces catastrophe as COVID-19 cases have further stretched the health infrastructure that is severely weakened by decades of war. Afghanistan's health department said that it was concerned that less than a third of those confirmed have the disease were women which officials believe was due to the lack of female access to health care in deeply conservative society. Relatively smaller countries in South Asia, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan and the Maldives have thus far been able to contain the spread but with looming economic compulsions. It becomes a major challenge for these countries to contain the spread. Moving on, while the Nepalese Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli has refused to step down despite a growing resignation chorus from both his party members and opposition for his failures at handling domestic as well as foreign policy, a large number of his countrymen living in India have urged Kathmandu to amicably resolve issues with New Delhi. They are of the view that growing Chinese influence on Nepalese discourse can potentially affect the centuries old and deep people-to-people -people connection between two countries. These men and women in New Delhi, carrying floats with texts hailing India-Nepal friendship and criticizing China, are of Nepali origin. They held a peaceful demonstration for hours before the Nepalese embassy, appealing for an amicable solution to the recently cropped up territorial deadlock between the friendly neighbours, India and Nepal. They also accused Beijing of meddling in Nepal's domestic politics and influencing its foreign policies to its own strategic advantage. वहां के लोग तो नहीं उन्होंने अलग होने का प्रयास किया है और चाइना ने इसका दुरुपयोग किया है तो हम लोग चाहते हैं कि वो इस बात को समझें और अपने रिश्तों को क्योंकि भारत और नेपाल में रोटी बेटी का संबंध रहा है हमारे भगवान एक है हमारा धर्म एक है हमारी जात बिरादरी एक हम किसी तरह से जब अलग नहीं तो अलग कैसे हो सकते हैं तो हम इस बात को समझाने के लिए यहाँ पे आए हुए हैं और ज्ञापन देने The Indo-Nepal ties have lately been strained by a series of political developments which the observers, ranging from common people to political experts, have termed a Chinese handiwork. Political analysts believe that Oli-led communist government in Nepal is following dictations from Beijing. First, Prime Minister Oli raked up decades-old insignificant territorial issue by making unilateral cartographic changes and then spun a number of anti-India lies which analysts say couldn't have been conceived anywhere other than the Beijing. The step of banning private India media channels was a copybook Chinese model. Many say that China, which failed to secure any gains in Galwan region along Indian border, has been pulling strings in Kathmandu and using its leadership as proxy against India. Politicians demanding Oli's ouster were not paid any heed and those criticizing his decisions have been shown the door. PM Oli has painted the entire issue as nationalistic campaign being pursued for his country. Oli charcha ma rahe ka rajnitik paridrishya ka karan kati paye ma rajnitik istirta istai tora istapit pranali prati chinta ra samvedan shilta bade ko bani paincha. Mo ashwast paran saansu. Am Nepali aur bich apashi ekta badauna. संघीय लोकतांत्रिक गणतंत्र को रक्षा करना 
राष्ट्रीय स्वाभिमान मथि उठा देश को सावम सत्ता र भौगोलिक अखंडता अक्षुण्ण राख् मेरे तर्फब दृढ़ अड़ान रदसम को प्रयास जारी रह The rhetoric of Nepal government however has not resonated with people. As many as 8 million Nepalis who do not require a visa or work permit in India have raised apprehensions on their government's posture. Experts have opined that a short-term aggression allegedly at behest of foreign nations might bring long term difficult times for nepal and the recent turn of events has produced nothing but circumstances that might trigger a sudden decline in decades old friendship moving on india has upped its efforts at restoring the economic losses it suffered due to world's biggest and longest lockdown and subsequent slowdown in the market while its invite last week to the international corporations is paying off the easing of restrictions in almost every sector is bringing the economy back on track tech giant google has committed to invest 10 billion us dollars over next 5 years in india Recently Prime Minister Modi also appealed other countries to increase cooperation in trade and other sectors in order to revamp global economy. Indian Prime Minister who in the previous week invited the major companies across the world to invest in India has now urged the democratic and developed nations to increase cooperation so that the corona ravaged trade and economy could be revamped the world's economy has been ravaged by the weeks of lockdown and sudden rise of covid-19 cases countries are now mulling over safety measures driven alternatives to restart the economic activities in phased manner india and its other south asian neighbors have opened almost all sectors covid 19 ke baad aarthik kshetra mein vaishvik star par nayi samasyaye utpann ho gayi iske liye डेमोक्रेटिक राष्ट्रों के बीच अधिक सहयोग की आवश्यकता हम सब महसूस करते हैं रूल्स बेज इंटरनेशनल ऑर्डर पर विभिन्न प्रकार के दबाव है ऐसे में भारत ईयू पार्टनरशिप आर्थिक पुनर्निर्माण में और एक मानव केंद्रित और मानवता केंद्रित ग्लोबलाइजेशन के निर्माण में महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका निभा सकती है न्यू डेली इज ऑल्सो सीकिंग अज इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द कंट्री गूगल इंक हैज कमिटेड टू इन्वेस्ट अराउंड टेन बिलियन डॉलर इन इंडिया इन नेक्स्ट फाइव टू सेवन इयर्स Google says its investment will largely be focused at the growth of apps and software platforms in the country and for that it has already bought a 7.7% stake worth 4.5 billion dollars in geo platforms Indian company Reliance has attracted global business giants from the United States in the past few months with facebook buying shares worth 5.7 billion dollars in the month of april this year our investment of 4 and a half billion dollars in geo is the first and the biggest investment we will make through this fund i'm excited that our joint collaboration will focus on increasing access for hundreds of millions of indians who don't currently own a smartphone while improving the mobile experience for all google and geo are partnering to build an android based smartphone operating system through this partnership we are confident that we can accelerate the national mission 
of putting a smart device in the hands of every Indian. With its rapidly improving business atmosphere, India has become one of the top investment attractions with country securing a position in the first 10 nations with most foreign direct investment. As per the experts, a nearly $50 billion FDI of previous year is poised to grow further this year. Investors across the world are also believing that China, which was favourite pick for major companies around the world until previous year, cannot be trusted anymore. And it is not just the origin and spread of Corona, but a rapidly evolving domestic political situation and China's increasing aggression against almost everyone around has exposed its expansionist intentions. Moving on. Pakistan's disregard for the rules and protocols once again became evident as it didn't allow Indian Council a complete access to its client Kulbhushan Jadav, who is on a death row in Pakistan. And this is the situation when the Premier Global Judiciary, the International Court of Justice, has asked Pakistan to review the punishment and provide an unbridled consular access to Indian side. Pakistan's devious yet juvenile design of framing Kulbhushan Jadav has been exposed completely. It has been using coercive methods to get a statement from former Indian Navy commander turned businessman who was arrested illegally by its army and was subsequently sentenced to death on charges of espionage. While it failed to establish its case in International Court of Justice and instead was humiliated for crimes on an innocent, it turned to the tactics of getting statement through alternative strategies. Pakistan recently provided consular access to India, but in blatant violation of the law recorded their conversation. This is an elementary tactic used on inmates to see if the person has changed his statement from what he has been taught. Experts say that he cannot continue to have similar treatment and India must visit ICJ once again to get justice. Consular access uh, will be meaningful only if there are no Pakistani officials who are listening in, they could torture or threaten Kuldeep Jadav uh, from speaking the truth. So India clearly has uh, its task cut out in the future on this issue. Before this, Pakistan had coerced Jadav into saying that he didn't require any consular access for his case. India had earlier reached the UN court seeking its intervention in the case opposing the steps taken by the kangaroo courts of Pakistan to hang him till death. Pakistan's argument were overruled. It stands that it was not obligated to allow diplomatic assistance for people suspected of being spies or terrorists was dismissed straight away as the court believed it had breached Jadav's rights. They have not been able to advance any evidence or proof or uh, uh, facts which would go to substantiate their claim. And ever since that time, uh, whether it was the trial by the military court, it was a kangaroo court because uh, no uh, charge sheet was presented to Kulbushan Jadav, no evidence, no uh, what is the basis of the verdict or even uh, what the verdict is, except that he was sentenced uh, summarily to uh, uh, death. 
In order to prevent a further damage to its reputation, Pakistan has taken symbolic steps in the past as well, but didn't provide a real access to his mother and sister who had come to meet him. Moving on. Engineers in illegally occupied Pakistan, occupied Kashmir, protested against the establishment as they say they were being denied the allowances they deserved. Pakistan has been misruling the region of POK for more than seven decades and has accorded a second-class treatment to its citizens. While it has gained control over the land, resources and institutions through illegal means, the citizens have been kept deprived of any dividends or profits. A large number of engineers carried out a peaceful rally in Muzaffarabad town of illegally occupied POK to demand the technical allowance which they say is being deliberately denied to them by the administration. They also issued an ultimatum saying that the intensity of their demonstrations would increase if the government didn't pay an immediate heed to their demands. Engineers say that they have been treated unfairly by successive regimes despite their selfless and tireless work for the development of the region. जब हक देने की बात आती है बस किस्मसी के साथ एक साजिश के तहत जीनियर्स को उनका हक नहीं दिया जाता ये जो ठंडे कमरों में बैठे हुए लोग फैसला करते हैं उनको ये याद रखना चाहिए ये जो बिल्डिंग है ये स्ट्रक्चर है ये जो रोड्स हैं ये जो बिजली है पानी है सारा हमारी हमारी कार्य नमाया है हमारे बुजुर्गों के जो हमारे सीनियर थे उनकी कावशों का नतीजा है आज आप पावपट से लेकर दिनभर तक सफर करके देखें ये जो काली सड़कें हैं ब्लैक टॉप रोड ये जो स्ट्रक्चर है जिनके अंदर आप बैठ के मीटिंग करते हैं बैठते हैं वीडियो लिंक्स पे खताब करते हैं ये जो पानी है ये बिजली है जो पहाड़ों पे आपको बिजली नजर आती है ये सब इन इंजीनियर्स के काउशों का नतीजा है Pakistan which claims the region of its own has given similar allowances to engineers in its provinces but has turned a blind eye to the demands of these men all they are asking is 1.5% technical allowance of their salary as per 2017 pay scale is kabil se taluq rakhne wale logon ko agar apni lajak se aur decency se apne mutalbaat unhe tasleem na kare to ye afsos ka maqam hai aur isse bhi zyada afsosnak baat ye hai ki political elite जो है ना इस बात को मानती है इसको तस्लीम करती है लेकिन हमारी ब्यूरोसी जो है ना इसमें आड़े आती है हम इसमें क्या कहें कि चीफ एग्जेक्टिव जो इस रियासत के वजीर अजम है उनके अकाम को अहमियत नहीं दी जा रही It is not just about the engineers. Pakistan has systematically denied benefits, rights and resources to the people of this illegally occupied territory for more than seven decades. Demands and dissents have been suppressed using excessive force and in some cases even a legislative route has been used to keep them marginalized and deprived. Pakistan is now constructing dams and roads without the consent of locals. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.